my name is Vindimus and today we're going to be learning how to create a set of radio buttons. If you want to follow along, the link is in the description down below. Let's begin. You can use radio buttons for questions where you want the user to only give you one answer out of multiple options. Radio buttons are a type of input. Each of your radio buttons can be nested within its own label element. By wrapping an input element inside of a label element, it will automatically associate the radio button input with the label element surrounding it. All related radio buttons should have the same name. Attribute To create a radio button group. By creating a radio group, selecting any single radio button will automatically deselect the other buttons within the same group, ensuring only one answer is provided by the user. Here's an example of a radio button. And you have the label, then the input type, radio. Then you have the name, indoor, outdoor. And it says indoor for the text. It is considered best practice to set a for attribute on the label element with a value that matches the value of the ID attribute of the input element. This allows assistive technologies to create a linked relationship between the label and the child input element. I think they should probably highlight that to say label like this, but okay. For example, here is your four equal to indoor with the label, the four attribute, and here is the ID attribute that is also labeled to indoor to match the label and the input attributes for an ID matching. And assistive technologies I believe means like different code like libraries and things different languages if they have it enabled I'm not sure exactly. So this is where I'm still learning and I guess we'll all learn together, which is the way it goes, you know. Add a pair of radio buttons to your form, each nested in its own label element. One should have the option of indoor and the other should have the option of outdoor. Both should share the name attribute of indoor outdoor to create a radio group. So the name is basically the group name for the button group. And then the type is radio, which I believe just means options, like a list to select from, like button. Radio is like different buttons on a radio, like the old school radios. And then your ID is here. So you have um, input, which is what the user is going to input, which is the button that they're going to select. And then label is, I'm guessing it's just like displaying the name. But let's uh, let's head down to the challenge objectives and let's let's knock this out. This is getting 
um, might seem overwhelming, it might seem complicated, but again, we're going to take it slow and we're going to break it down and we're going to do it one at a time. So, your page should have two radio button elements. So, let's do a radio button element and Hmm. So you need two buttons, right? And I see the example here just says input. So if you just input this, that doesn't create a button. You have to actually put button and then put type radio. That's what I'm thinking. So we'll try it one way and then we'll try it another way. Whichever way works, we'll go with it. If they both work, we'll follow the objective. Um, the objectives, I guess, is for the challenge. So, okay. Two radio button elements. So, we're going to create a button element and the type is going to equal radio type equals radio Your radio buttons, well, we need to hmm. type radio name should be indoor, outdoor, I believe. So, okay, we'll finish this one off here. Remember, taking it slow. We're learning, no pressure name equals indoor dash outdoor and then we're gonna close the bracket there and this one is supposed to be called indoor and then you wanna finish the button with a oops with a forward slash button closing tag and that's um, one button and since we need two I'm gonna copy this code here control C and then I'm gonna paste it now the difference for this one is not gonna be indoor they want it to say outdoor so just put outdoor it's still radio and it's still indoor outdoor for the name Now, each of your two radio button elements should be nested in its own label element. So now what we're going to do is we're going to nest it, which means you just, you know, wrap it. You put label before and after each of the buttons. So coming up here to the example, you can see that you just have label and then down here you have also forward slash label and that's one then for the next one we're gonna just do the same thing label and then go down after the button and we're going to put forward slash label to close it. Okay. And that's like that completes that objective. But we're going to go take another look at it. Now, label is nice because it kind of allows you to collapse each individual item. That's nice. Each of your label elements should have a closing tag, it just means the forward slash label. We have that. One of your radio buttons should have the label indoor. And one of your radio buttons should have the label outdoor. So up here in the example, you can see
that would be the second example here. So basically we're going to put 4 equal to indoor in the label here on the indoor. You wouldn't want to put this on the outdoor one because this is the indoor one. So space 4 equals indoor and I believe you're supposed to put the ID in here because they say it's the best practice. So I'll do that. ID oops, sorry about that. ID equals and we'll just match it indoor. And down here on the outdoor label you're going to want to put for equals outdoor and again the button ID is going to equal outdoor but remember it has to be in the, the quotation marks I forgot but there we go so now I'm not exactly sure what that does I'll look here to see label four equals indoor it's kind of nice that you can kind of see what the label is four equals outdoor four equals indoor when you break it down when you collapse it that's kind of nice and then each of your radio button elements should be added within the form tag so that means you want each element which is going to be all from the label up to the label you're going to want to cut that out and then you're going to want to right here so that it's a part of this form element which goes from the opening here to the closing here but let's run this test and see what happens when you don't do that so we run the test and it's not picking up the elements for the radio buttons and there's let's see you can kind of see here in the console we know this one basically we failed a bunch of different ones so now let's I mean you can even if honestly you can collapse these if you wanted to just collapse them and then just go from label to label like this cut it and then come in here inside the form paste it and now you can see sorry about the yawn there from the form down to the form submit indoor outdoor it looks kind of weird I wish this was on a new line the submit and then the indoor what happens if I nothing is there a way to make a new line here no. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't like the way it looks. Anyways, let's let's run this test and see see what happens here. Okay. So each of your two radio button elements should be nested in its own label element. Let's look at the example. Hmm. Label for indoor. Hmm. So maybe I need to remove the ID. Let's see what happens if I do that.
No. Hmm. Two radio button elements. Oh, radio buttons are of a type input. Okay, so it's not button. You have to put input. Oh, okay, this is where I messed up. And that's good that I caught it because this is a learning moment. Let me add the IDs back in here. Maybe I can just control Z. I did. So instead of button, it has to say input. So this needs to say input. And you need to change the corresponding close tag. And that has to go for both of these radio buttons, which I'm sure there's a way I can change them both at the same time, but I'm not that advanced yet. I've seen that in other like C sharp for Unity and stuff. You can just change multiple corresponding open and close. Anyways, so we fixed the input radio. Now you can actually see it's not a button anymore, it's an option, which is nice. And name attribute of indoor, outdoor. Okay, so it was failing to recognize radio button elements. Okay, let's run the test again. You are unstoppable, my friends. Definitely the name radio button threw me off because I thought you had to make it a button element. But no, you make it an input element. So I'm all kinds of confused, but I learned through experience today kind of how to do it and next time hopefully I will remember that <laughs> I hope you guys learned something through this lesson I know I did and now we will continue but I will go to the outro as I do on every challenge thank you for watching if you feel this video was helpful or you liked it then click the like button if you want to see more content like this this then subscribe and if you have any questions post them in the comments down below i am Findimus, and i will see you later have a good day